Today we'll look at laminate composite optimization in SimCenter 3D. There's a number of options that are available in SimCenter 3D for performing laminate composite optimization. The first is using the laminate modeler coupon optimization. There are a number of benefits to using the laminate modeler coupon optimization, such as it's very fast um, and it's very easy to set up. However, if you need to analyze the laminate in the context of the geometry, then this is not a viable option since it is only for coupon optimization. Another option is using Nastrian Solution 200 design optimization. This does support geometry and is not limited to a coupon. It also runs very quickly and supports all your laminate physical properties. Some of the limitations are it's not quite as easy to set up as the other options and the optimization results go to an FO6 file so post-processing is not quite as elegant. The last option we have is geometry optimization. This is very easy to set up. There's a nice GUI that supports uh, geometry as well, so you're not limited to a coupon. And also it's very easy to interpret the results since they go to a spreadsheet, an optimization spreadsheet. The only drawback is that it's a bit slower to run. Next we'll take a look at a demonstration of each of these options. For the demonstration we'll use a sheet body and we'll begin by creating a linear static solution 101 in the Nastrian solver environment and we'll create a shell mesh on our sheet body. We'll edit the mesh associated data of the shell mesh to ensure that we're using the physical property table as our thickness source and we'll also make sure that our material orientation vectors are consistent across the mesh. Now we'll create a laminate physical property using the laminate modeler. We're going to use the PCOMP output format because it supports the symmetric stacking recipe. We'll also select our favorite ply failure theory. We'll put in a shear stress for bonding and we'll create four plies. Here I'll select an orthotropic material out of the library. And I'll also assign a thickness to the plies. For each of the plies, I'd like to select a unique angle, so I'll put those in next. All right, and we can see that symmetric layup here, all eight plies in the ply sketcher. Now we'll enable optimization and specify a parameter that we'd like to optimize on. So here we'll select ply thickness. We can sp select either discrete or continuous values for the ply thickness. Here I'll specify some discrete values. I'll hit the tab key after putting in the value so we'll get the plus sign available. So we'll go from five thousandths to twenty thousandths in five thousandths increments. Here you can see that has been applied as an optimization variable. Now we'll set up our optimization objective, which is to minimize the mass. We'll also put in a constraint, which will be our ply failure index. We'll make sure that that's always less than or equal to 1. 
and then we can create a load case on our coupon and that's why the value for the load is in pounds per inch because it's per the coupon so we'll put 1e5 there as our load all right, and then we can run our optimization and see the results in a spreadsheet. Here you can see the various optimization candidates sorted in order of fitness. Here you can see the objective of the weight and the ply failure index. So for optimization candidate one, which has the highest fitness, we can see what that looks like by selecting it and then we can see it in the ply sketcher as well as in the ply layup in terms of the various thicknesses that it's found as the optimum. All right, so that's the laminate modeler coupon optimization. We'll go back to our original laminate and next we'll take a look at Nastrian Solution 200 optimization for optimizing the laminate. So here we'll create a new solution, solution 200 design optimization. And we'll begin in the case control specifying a design objective. So here as in our previous example we want to minimize weight and you can see there's a number of other objectives that we could select as well. We'll give it a label and it's defined. Next we'll go to the bulk data section where we can define our design variables. Here we want to select composite property design variables and we'll go ahead and create one. We'll give it a slightly different name, design variable for ply one. And we'll give it a, a label. Now this is going to be our ply thickness, so we'll specify our initial value as 20 thousandths and our lower bound as 5 thousandths, upper bound at 20. And then the type of property that we'd like to select is our laminate that we had defined earlier. So we can reuse that here for our optimization. Then we can select ply thickness, which is what we want to optimize on and the ply definition is going to be a single ply because we'd like to select a specific value for each ply. So to do that, we'll go ahead and copy that design variable, which was specified for ply 1, and we'll apply it for now ply 2 as well. And then we'll do the same thing two more times for plies three and four. And because we defined our laminate physical property earlier as using the PCOMP format, the symmetric ply support will be available. So we will be assured of getting the same optimized thickness on the symmetric plies as well. All right, so we'll select all four of those design variables, and then we can select our design optimization parameters. And we're gonna select P1 as one, which will request optimization output to the FO6 file at every iteration. And P2 is nine, which requests the objective design variables and response output to the FO6 file. And you can see all of that in the Nastran Quick Reference Guide documentation. All right, so next we'll define our design constraint, which is going to be our failure index. And for that, uh, also the item code is five for the failure index. You can see that in the Quick Reference Guide as well. 
and we'll select our laminate physical property from earlier. We'll call that FI for failure index and we'll give it a lower bound of 0 and an upper bound of 1. All right, we'll add that to the list. And now we're ready to create our constraints and loads. We'll begin by putting a fixed constraint on the corner. We'll constrain the edge in degree of freedom 2, which is the y direction. And then we'll constrain the other point on the opposite side in z. Now this particular geometry is 3 inches wide. So I'm going to triple the load that I had specified earlier in the laminate coupon optimization. So the load will be equivalent. And we'll put that in the material orientation vector of x, which is the y direction as you see on the screen. All right, you can see real time how quickly that runs. It went through all of the iterations in about a second. Now to post-process the results we need to go look at the FO6 file. So let's go ahead and open that up and we'll scroll down to the bottom and page up one page and we'll see the design variable history for our optimization. So you can see the four plies that we had assigned the variables for, the initial value and the final optimized value at design cycle 5. Alright, next we'll take a look at geometry optimization. Now to do that we first need to create a global layout. We need to do that because expressions are supported in the global layout. And we'd like to put in some expressions for the thickness. So here we've imported it from our apply physical property table and we'll just respecify uh, thickness as an expression for each of the plies. So PT1 for ply thickness 1 we'll set that at 20 thousandths and do the same thing for the remaining three plies. All right, so now that we've assigned expressions for all of the plies, we'll go ahead and define our draping, which is just merely going to be a projection of the material orientation vector. And then we can update our global layups and zones. All right, so now to make sure that we're using that layup, we'll change our physical property for our laminate, laminate to inherit from the global layup. All right, so before we can run our optimization, we need to complete the specification of our linear static solution because that's the one that we're going to use for our optimization. So we'll add our constraints and loads to it that we're reusing from our solution 200 run. And uh, this one real time you can see runs in less than a second. And now we can go ahead and set up our geometry optimization on that solution 101. So we'll define our objective, which will be to minimize weight. We'll output the weight in pounds.
then we'll define our result measure. And here, what we'd like to do is find the maximum displacement in Y due to our load across the entire model, and we'll call it DISPY max. You can see the current value is uh, 6 inches. And what we want to do is give that an upper limit of 15 inches. All right, and in minimizing the weight, what we'd like to do is modify the ply thickness. So here we'll allow the ply thickness to modify for each of the plies between 20 and 5 thousandths. All right, and there you can see our design variables. Lastly, for some control parameters, we can give a maximum number of iterations we're willing to uh, run for our optimization, and then we're ready to, to run. So here it starts NASTRAN and runs through a uh, number of iterations, modifying the thickness. Here I'll pause the movie and we'll go straight to the results, which get put into an optimization spreadsheet where you can see your weight as a function of your iteration as well as the various design variables and your result measure, which is that maximum displacement in the Y, which we wanted less than 15. And there you can see the ply thicknesses that meet that criteria. And also those ply thicknesses are immediately available in our layup. Here we can go ahead and view that in the ply sketcher.